Welcome back to It's Haunted What Now. I'm your host, Lainey. As I said in the last episode, we're back. And I just wanted to know if you missed us as much as we missed you. Now, after a wild and crazy few months with more curveballs than I had catcher's mitts for, I'm happy to say that I'm back to bring you some terrifying tales that will keep you shivering even through the sweltering summer months. I haven't been sitting idle either. These stories are carefully collected to really remind you what scary can be. And don't think I've forgotten that we're rapidly approaching Halloween. It's practically spooky season already, which means it's the perfect time to settle in with a few scary stories. I know I, for one, can't wait to dive in. Okay, ready to get spooked? Our first story today comes from The Melano, who tells us of a violent entity they encountered in their apartment and the lengths it's willing to go to in order to be taken seriously. My fiancé and I live in a two-bedroom apartment. We have the master and our roommate lives in the other. Both bedrooms have walk-in closets. We've always felt a dark energy coming from the closets, especially in the second bedroom. That closet has access to a crawl space, so we assume that it's coming from something upstairs. During our time here, we've seen plenty of shadows and movement out of the corners of our eyes. I've witnessed our closet door slam shut, even though it had previously been tightly closed. Things are always falling in our bathroom, and we recently had the glass dome over the ceiling lamp fall off and crash to the floor, despite being tightly screwed on. The paranormal activity here doesn't bother my fiancé and I. We've experienced many paranormal entities in the past. We had two roommates, a couple, who had lived in the second bedroom, and their lights would always turn on by themselves. Brand new bulbs would only last a week before dying. One of the roommates had attempted to put a curse or hex of some sort on my fiancé and I just before moving out. Since they moved, I've been hearing a man and woman talking, either in the hallway or in the living room almost daily. This began about two weeks ago, shortly before our new roommate moved in. Our new roommate believed that the entity in the room was good and welcomed it to be her friend. We warned her against doing so, but she was convinced otherwise. The next day, we woke to her banging on the walls. We thought she was hanging up pictures, so we didn't think anything of it, until we heard a gasping cry for help. She has a serious health condition, so we immediately rushed to her. We found her with her hands at her side and a scarf around her neck, pulling itself tighter and tighter by the second. We could actually see it tightening. By the time we found her, her face was already purple, and we immediately started pulling the scarf off. Afterwards, she told us that the entity had been banging her head against the wall before it strangled her. She said that she'd welcomed it into her body to try and stop it after it wouldn't leave. I immediately performed a banishment ritual to cleanse her room. We haven't had any more attacks like that, but the shadows I normally see from the corner of my eyes have become solidly human-shaped. They look like masses of black energy, and the voices I hear have gotten louder. I've been feeling drawn to do a spirit session to try to get any more clear communication from what's here but I'm always hesitant to do so because I don't want to open a portal. Lastly, I feel I should probably mention, before we moved into this apartment, someone had drawn a Ouija board and a Sharpie on our front door. Okay, at this point, let's call a spade a spade. The instant something in my house starts attacking me like that, it's the instant for sale sign that ends up on the lawn the same night. You've managed to react so calmly to this entire situation, it's actually very impressive. Personally, I'd be running for the hills, especially after finding a symbol like that on my front door. Our next story comes from Manx and Cheese, 
they bring us the story of a so-called prankster at their workplace and the video evidence that made it more than just an inside joke. There's a ghost at my workplace. We've named him Tim. Most of my mornings start at 3.30 a.m. I pull myself out of bed and stumble around until I get to work around 4 a.m. Typically, there are two of us to open, a baker who makes all of my donuts and me, the opening manager who makes all the coffees. This particular morning, I was late. 15 minutes late, but enough to scare my baker into thinking I'd just left him to his own devices until 7 a.m. when the rest of the employees were due to come in. As the general manager, I see and hear everything that goes down in my store. I had heard the spooky stories about Tim knocking over cups and causing a ruckus. To me, Tim was an imaginary person that everyone liked to joke about. Even I did, saying that, Oh no, the spill on the counter must have been Tim. Shame on him. We laughed and joked about him and blamed him for all of our problems. It kept spirits light and gave us a scapegoat when something went wrong. I am a firm believer in ghosts and I've had plenty of experiences myself. Tim, however, was a fake ghost who I was sure was just a running joke. That's what I thought anyway. I walked in at 4.15 a.m. to find my baker standing in the front line and not in the back where his station was. With his eyes wide and wearing a scared expression, I immediately got worried. I asked what was wrong and he just said, There's someone else here. So, here we were. A small coffee shop located right in front of a city jail. Attempted break-ins were a regular thing with the colder weather when inmates were released and their rides never showed. They were usually just looking for a warm place to spend the night. My baker rattled off how he had heard the cooler door open and shut, then someone shuffling across the beverage station. He went around the corner, thinking I had come in while he was in the freezer. He then heard the sounds of running down the back hall, our swinging door being slammed open, and the person going out into the dining room where I was currently standing. Our security system sends alarms out when the doors are opened without the code. My baker said he had not heard the alarm. So a manhunt ensued. I searched every single place that a person could be. We looked for signs of a break-in, for signs of a robbery, for something. I took him to the office. We locked the doors behind us and we checked the cameras. At 4.12 a.m., my cooler door opened. A couple seconds later, the swinging door did too just like my baker had said. He sits in the parking lot for me now and waits until I get there. We've been keeping it to ourselves. I would love to see that video footage and listeners, I'm going to try and get it. I feel like I want more from this story. Did you show the footage to anyone yet? Has Tim been back? Has anything escalated beyond this day? There's a lot going on here, and I feel like we all want to hear part two of the adventures of Ghost Tim. If you have any updates, please submit them back to us. I don't think I'm alone in saying that we'd all love to hear them. Our next story comes from Falono. They have an eerie tale of a quiet night on their front porch, and the disturbance that made it unforgettably terrifying. I live in a condo in a small town, right on the edge of a state park. About 10 years ago, on the other side of the condo, there was a really popular golf course, but it ended up going out of business. It's abandoned now, but it's still kept pretty well. One night, I had gone to sleep early after work, and after I woke up, I ended up staying up quite late. I had gone out onto my porch to have a cigarette after my boyfriend had gone to bed around 2.40 a.m., Before I could even light my cigarette, I felt uncomfortable. 
I felt a sort of pit in the base of my spine, like I was being watched. I rationalized and told myself that no one was outside and and that I'd just finish up my cigarette and go inside. I even used my flashlight to shine it out into the yard. I saw nothing, so I sat down, turned on a video, and finished my cigarette. I even decided to smoke a bit of weed, all with the same really weird feeling. Suddenly, I saw a hunched silhouette move along the property line, passing the little row of trees to the right of the house across the way. I sat up immediately and turned my phone off. I closed my eyes so I could listen harder and heard nothing. It was nothing. At this point, I was totally paranoid. There was no way I'd just seen something creep by. I would have heard them. Humans are too clumsy, especially in the dark. I used my flashlight again, looking into the yard, but I couldn't see or hear anything. Jesus, I thought to myself. This is some good stuff because I'm paranoid as hell. But then, of course, I'd felt nervous before I even began smoking. I was about to finish up and go inside, when suddenly I heard a loud snapping noise from the flower bush in the yard about a hundred feet away from where I was sitting. What the actual F is this? I thought to myself. I was frozen in my seat and decided to light another cigarette, just in case there really was someone sneaking around in the yard. I listened as hard as I could, my chest tightening. Eventually, after a long time sitting in silence, I decided it was an animal. I'll just finish the cigarette, I told myself. Then I'll go in. That's when I heard steps. It was like something was deliberately creeping through the yard around the flower bush towards my left neighbor's porch. The steps were heavy but muffled and headed towards me. Getting really scared now, I thought about calling my boyfriend's phone so he would come downstairs and get me. Instead, I decided that I was going to scare whatever it was. I hoped that if I made a sudden loud noise, I'd scare any animal away. Loudly, I shoved at the porch stairs opposite to me, which echoed in the quiet night, but no result. Just silence. No crickets. No rustling. No animal running away nothing. For some reason, ignoring every feeling in my body, I decided further investigation was a good idea. And yes, I think I would die first if I were in a horror movie. I aimed my flashlight into the yard again, even though I still couldn't see anything. This time, it felt different. As I swept my light across the yard off to the left, I heard a deep, guttural growling, It sounded like it was coming from directly beside me. And beyond that, it was more than just a growl. Inside the growl was a second tone, a strange clicking sound. I wish I could describe it better, but whatever it was, it made me slam my cigarette out, pick up all my stuff, and run inside, shaking like a leaf. It felt like I'd been stalked. Whatever it was, it knew I was there, and it was pissed that I was flashing lights at it. Could it have been an animal? I don't know. What kind of animal would make those kinds of clicking sounds? I'm not a zoologist and I can't think of a single animal that would make both those sounds at once, but of course, if anyone listening has any suggestions, please send them in, let us know on social media. I'm particularly focused on the way you made so much noise to scare it. If it were an animal, surely it would have been spooked by such loud goings on. So maybe it really wasn't an animal, and good thing you got inside when you did. The next story comes from Aggravating Quiet 436, who brings us a tale that begins with a family feud and ends with terrifying night terrors. (laughs) 
This was the first time that I had tried to talk about something that terrified me, and no one believed me. My siblings and I were walking home from school one Friday, and I remember it being a hot day. When we got home, we did the usual routine. Turn on the TV, wait for mom to cook dinner or make sandwiches, take a nap, etc. I was watching TV when my mom suddenly got between the TV and I and started screaming at me. I don't remember what she was yelling at me about, I just remember she was infuriated with me. My siblings went to their rooms while my mom kept yelling. I cried and I was getting angry too. I remember screaming at her through my tears and we got into a pretty nasty fight that I still remember and regret to this day. We were both taken aback by the ferocity of the fight. She started to cry too and I could sense how stressed she was. I just couldn't understand why or what was causing it. I ran to my room crying and flung myself onto my bed, drowning out my sobs with my pillow. My sister left the room to go back to watching TV. I cried myself to sleep. When I next opened my eyes, it was pitch black and I hadn't just woken up on my own. It felt like something was pulling at the blanket that was covering me. I shrugged it off and uncovered myself, thinking maybe I was having a dream. One of those ones where you feel like you're falling and you jolt awake. It was very hot and when I shrugged the blanket off, the room felt so fresh. I saw my sister in her bed on the other side of the room and tried going back to sleep. Not a minute had gone by before I felt it. Something grabbed hold of my foot and pulled me downwards like it was trying to drag me under the bed. I immediately sat up and saw a black hand firmly gripping my foot. I can still feel it sometimes, and that image is forever burned into my head. I panicked. I yanked my foot out of its grip and sat up in my bed, breathing heavily, trying to process what had just happened. Was it real? Did it actually happen? I felt like I could still feel its grip around my foot. I tried leaning over the side of the bed. I wanted to run, but I didn't want it to grab me as soon as I stepped on the floor. I prepared myself and bolted out of the room into my mom's bed. I felt terrible about leaving my sister behind, but I was a child. I was scared. I woke my mom up and told her what happened. Okay, she told me sleepily. Go back to sleep. I tried to do as she said. I slept at the end of the bed by her feet and tried my hardest to go back to sleep. Eventually, it worked, but I was restless the rest of the night. The next morning, my mom asked me why I was sleeping in her bed. I explained again what had happened, and she didn't believe me. She told me that I'd just been imagining things and that it was my guilty conscience because of how I'd behaved the day before. I learned to keep quiet about it. Since that day, I've never slept with my feet uncovered. I don't care if I'm roasting like a chicken under there. I might be getting crispy, but I won't be taken. I've also acquired a fear of the dark and absolutely will not sleep without some kind of light. I learned that fear the hard way too. A few years ago, I accidentally went to sleep in the dark and for the first time ever, I experienced sleep paralysis. As the years have gone by, I've experienced a lot of paranormal things and what I can say for certain is that I've never felt alone. It's like it keeps following me or wants something. The thing has watched me grow, watched me suffer, cry, laugh, and sleep. I know a lot of people joke these days about how they can't sleep with their foot sticking out of the edge of the bed because the demons will get them, but this is definitely an instance where I agree and I'm the same way. I will wrap myself up. Not that that would actually stop them, but that's neither here nor there. Now, if something grabbed my foot like that, I think I'd go back to sleeping in a fully walled-in bed like a toddler just to crib for myself. It just seems like the safest bet. Our final story for today comes from Lean Skinnity. They encountered something at their friend's house one night. Something that seems to hold deeply sinister intentions. (laughs) 
So I think my friend's house has a demon. This happened a few years back and is by far the most terrifying paranormal experience I've had in my life. I'm sure this phrase is stated here a lot, but this experience is what made me believe. My friend Kyle and I were playing Halo online when suddenly he went completely silent. I said his name and he shushed me, so I went quiet too. Can you hear that? He asked me. I couldn't. He told me that there was a loud ticking coming from inside the walls of his game room. I thought it was weird, but thought it was probably a mouse or the air conditioning or something like that. A few days later, I went over to his house. Near midnight, he started hearing the ticking again. This time, we were in his bedroom, but he said it was very clearly coming from the game room. I still couldn't hear it, so he dragged me into the game room to listen. Still, nothing. I remember the game room was very hot, which was weird because the vent didn't have any issues. We could feel the cold air coming out of it. The rest of the house was also extremely cold. After some convincing, I agreed to turn the lights off so we could just sit there and listen. We sat together on the floor in the dark and instantly, I was filled with anxiety, a feeling of dread that I'll never be able to explain. I didn't believe in the paranormal and at this point, we didn't believe it was a ghost or a demon. He was just trying to get me to hear the noise. Finally, I started begging him to turn the lights back on. He agreed, but a few minutes later, we turned the lights off once more and tried again. My gut feeling was just terrible. I still couldn't hear the ticking, but the sense of dread mixed with the unbearable heat in that room made me certain something was wrong. This time, I kept hearing whispers. I asked Kyle if he was talking and he shushed me, telling me no. Finally, I heard it. The ticking. The whispers faded and I could finally hear it. Suddenly, there was a thud. Kyle flicked the lights on and a large stuffed toy shaped like a piece of cheese, something his family has for a football team or something, had fallen off a shelf on the other side of the room. I walked over, put it back on the shelf, and then knocked it off myself. It didn't make nearly as loud of a noise. It hadn't fallen. Something had to have thrown it at the ground, hard for it to make the noise it had. At that point, both of us were pretty nervous, so we went to leave. As we headed to the door, we noticed a large family photo of him and his family had fallen to the floor. It had been taken in front of a church with a large cross featured in the background, and the photo had fallen upside down, which meant the cross was upside down too. We turned the picture and the cross right side up. I'm not the religious type, but Kyle is, and at this point, I was just going along with it because I was freaking out. We went to bed, neither of us daring to go back into the game room. The next day after daylight broke, we were brave enough to venture in, since it was less creepy with the sun out. The picture was upside down again. We both broke out into a cold sweat and bolted out of that room. We didn't dare go back in there again for about a year. Okay, so this one got me. Especially the fact that the picture was upside down again the next morning, which is just not cool. Surely, none of the family members would have known that had happened to repeat it in order to scare you. And if it were something wrong with how the picture was hanging on the wall, how could it have fallen in the exact same way twice in a row? So you better believe it would take more than a year for me to go back into that room. Well, that does it for this episode. If you'd like to submit your own personal spooky tale to be read on the show, head to hauntedpod.com and, and click on the link to submit your story. You can also email me at hauntedpod at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts or your podcast player of choice. It really does help. You can find us on Twitter at podcast underscore haunted, Instagram at it's haunted what now, or at hauntedpod.com. Production assistance provided by Jesse Hawk. Writing assistance by Meg Williams. The official composer for the show is Neeks at We Talk of Dreams. Check him out on Twitter at We Talk of Dreams or We Talk of Dreams.com. Audio engineering provided by Chaz at Gray Multimedia. Until next time. 
Did you hear that?